to be the man. You got to beat the man. This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes. Where is he? Cut this shot. Your arms are just too short to box with God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Heels Podcast. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hunter. I'm joined today by Brian, Brian Peacock, and Chris Gonzalez. Come towards me. All right, all right, all right. I'm what? coming. I'm coming. No, no, wait, no, no, no. What are you doing? Coming toward you. No, come towards me. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> boom, 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 like. Hey, listen. You're gonna come man. give me a hug or something. Uh, hey, you're big and cuddly. It's okay. She's so, big. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, just special guest Chris Gonzalez here. And, and tell us why you're here today. Uh, I'm here for well, first of all, to join you guys on your amazing podcast and to uh. I'm, you know, and unveil my business, which is a wrestling company. I am an indie worker, and and I'm actually local here to you guys. So I figured it'd be nice to come on and tell the people about what we do. Most important thing in that statement. That's the second person that said amazing podcast. All right. Yeah, yeah. we got two good reviews. I'm just kidding. Listen, I'm just <laughs> don't want to listen to me. Hey, we can only go up, right? Yeah. Can you? I don't know. Week. <laughs> We're only going to Started go Started at the like bottom? Just, oh, wait, we're still here. Yeah, yeah, still, still here. Still down there somewhere. <laughs> still here. So, yeah, today we're going to be talking to Chris about his promotion. Did you say what it was called? It's Wrestling Has a Tomorrow. What? Wrestling Has a Tomorrow. What? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting to make that joke. <laughs> I'm sure everyone else has. Okay, uh, I'm from. I um, still can't decide if it's a good name or not. If Wrestling Has a Tomorrow is good? What? Uh, the logo so, <laughs> is incredible, by the way. Yeah. That's the reason why we kept it, is because okay. my, my little brother, who actually does, uh, he does, like, you know, like, uh, Twitch streaming, and he does, okay. like, graphics for uh, sponsored Call of Duty teams and stuff, so I told him just make a graphic or whatever, and he came up with that, and as soon as he made up made that logo, we were like, that's it, we need to keep it. Um, and, uh, and it's, it, the name came up, we used to work together, me and the, and the owner, we used to work together, and we just lay tile, and we just come up with. And we wanted it to catch, and we wanted to come up first. Like Wow came up, and we're like, "Ah, World War Craft, that one, that's, right. that's not gonna do." And then we were trying to come up like, like with just words with the acronym instead of just having an acronym, a- acronym, because then you just like everyone else. Yeah. Eventually, uh, one of our workers, Ace Alexander, uh, who also worked with us, said, "Hey, why don't we do wrestling has it tomorrow? Because we're the future of wrestling," and that right there pretty much told us wow that's really good and then we looked at the acronym and it was what and we figured why not what is a popular chant that people do in wrestling all the time because it's Stone Cold Steve Austin so we figured it'd be the best name that we could come up with and we were doing a show like a month later so we decided to stick with it what I was hoping to hear (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know it's just it's funny. It's like I wonder if in a few years, if you guys start blowing up, you're gonna be like, God, why did we call it that? <laughs> well, we we've already came up with like Stone Cold Steve Austin spoof shirts. Like, uh, why not, right? Right. Like, yeah. You have you have to go with it. So oh we yeah. Figure start doing. Spoof Isn't this one of those funny things? Like I I came up with the future heels because it's the future villains is our website. Yes. And everyone's like future villains. No, few true villains. Yes. Yeah. I future? Thought, no. I thought it was future when I, when we started. So. I didn't know until I saw the logo. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's FTV, and one of somebody's like, oh, it's a fuck TV? No, what? <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't mind joining that podcast either. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe that's a podcast we should start. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, no, Wrestling House Tomorrow is, um, is definitely a, uh, it, it's a project that's uh, with everything we have. Like, every, right. every, all, all of our money. Um, like all of our hearts put into it. There's no half-assing. There's no, you know, we go out there, we bust our butts, no matter what match in the card we are. We're like the '90s WWE stuff with the Attitude Era, where it was like everyone's trying to one up each other as opposed to just being part of the show. Right. And that's what we're going for because we want to be like the next big indie thing. So, with a couple of uh, traveled workers like myself and um, and a couple of trainees that want to stick around it seems like it's possible yeah and i, and I gotta say uh they are on youtube wrestling has a tomorrow but the match we just watched was ace alexander versus caleb courageous versus chris braddock myself yeah yes. and uh you'd have to google exactly or youtube exactly that and leave out wrestling has a tomorrow but 
God, we were watching that match, and I was, you said it, I was marking out. Because there was stuff like, yeah, uh, yeah. It was like watching an NXT show, an ROH show. Which, it I, was pre- really which good. I appreciate. By the way, I do. I appreciate it. Yeah. Because, and as we talked about before this, I'm not an indie guy. I don't really care yeah, for indie right. stuff. I might be able to get you to go to an indie show. Now. Well, we're going Saturday. Yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> this Saturday, right? Yes, this Saturday, May 13th. Doors open at 6.30. Um, the main event is a tables, ladders, and chairs match, including myself and my tag team partner, Zach Cooper. Illustrated. I know. That I'm, name. That's I'm, right. You said that. Yeah. I know. I'm a genius. Don't don't remind me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, and then versus Ace Alexander and Drake Xavier, and they are called the Brotherhood of the Traveling Tights. So I that's... Saw that. that... <laughs> so it, we've been working up to this feud for a while, and we just know we're the four most... Uh, we wanted to start it out with a big rivalry to kind of bring in people and we're the foremost uh i would say uh the the biggest vets in the locker room i guess and we've known each other for a long time so we went with it and decided it was it it, it would be the smartest thing to do after this we're branching out and trying to help some of our younger guys right yeah last week we were i looked up i must have been the facebook and i was like sports kit oh no that's what that says sports illustrated (laughs) yeah Yeah, my gimmick, like like I told you off the podcast, is is uh, you know it's an ex pro athlete, and my partner Zach Cooper is actually a football coach at Florida Atlantic University, and so he is Coach Cooper. So the, so oh, we figured that that. Oh no, Brooks should have been here. Brooks coaches in Orlando. Oh really? Yeah, he's a defensive coach. Yeah, see, we're like gonna have a match. Uh, so Brooks will be in the ring. <laughs> no, he won't get in the ring, but he'll walk me to it. Yeah, that's right. He'll be his representative. <laughs> I'd love to work you. I, I, I am one of those people that's just like, and they're like, hey, I want to wrestle you. Cool. Let me just figure out when that can be, and I will absolutely do it. I don't care how, if you've been training for two days or 15 years. I will. I am open to people their best match. I think that's how wrestling thrives that way. That's the way it should be, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially, like, us, we do trainees. You know, we train people and stuff. We don't charge. What's the point? Right. I'm not. I'm not trying to scan these people off of money. And I just want to uh, be able to pass the wrestling on to younger people. And, like have this that just carries on for years and years and years. You're not going to do that by overcharging people. Yeah. You overcharge people, the wrestling business dies. Yeah, no that's one right. Wants to do it. That's how schools die too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's what so, happened to mine. Yep. <laughs> exactly. It's just, it's not called for. I, I remember I did a school in North Carolina where they're like, oh, hey, if you walk in, you pay $20 every week. Now, that seems cheap, but six months down, not money. And it's hard, man. It's hard, especially yeah. in times right now. It's, it's difficult. So, yeah. But, I again, thank you guys for, you know, letting me on talk about this. And also talk about other topics, too, which I'm sure you probably have prepared as well. So, um, you know, hopefully the people here. We don't have anything prepared. Hey, <laughs> we're winging this one. Or winging it? This or... one? Do we wing? We wing everyone. No, we don't. <laughs> we, Magic we... of podcasts. We prepared topics for one podcast ever. <laughs> and I don't know if we stuck to them. So. Yeah, we did. We, we did. talked about like our favorite heels or some future heels. Oh, that that's probably one. why a little confusion happened. That was probably <laughs> probably my least favorite one. Then I think. Oh yeah, definitely. We're much better bullshitting. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't bullshit a bullshitter. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's true. But I'm good at bullshitting bullshitters. So. <laughs> that's why oh, I'm here. Are you, oh, so are you not a wrestler? Uh, of course I'm a wrestler. Okay. <laughs> are you not having a show this weekend? I am absolutely <laughs> having a show this weekend. I'm I spent way too much money not to. <laughs> right. Yes. Oh, I'm sure. I've kept the flyer in the windshield of my car since I picked it up, by the way. Oh, I appreciate that. Just just in case I, someone walks by and sees it. I don't think it. I ever got one for that show. Uh, you, I would have got one for a yeah, different show. You wouldn't. Have, you weren't at the NXT. Show. Oh yeah, you weren't the last. Which is in Kim's car, maybe. I don't know. What did I do with that? Um, I don't know. I still have it. I I have a somewhere. I have a box. And it's just full of FIP flyers. <laughs> so these will get added to it. Where I train. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Like, and that's another thing too. Uh, you know, when talking about schools that overcharge, I was lucky enough. To where I got to train at Florida or uh, Full Impact Wrestling, uh, you know, to uh, Florida Impact Pro or Full, full Impact Pro. Full Impact. Yeah, that's oh, it. Oh, that, I can never remember what it is. Yeah, oh, full, I knew what it was. Full Impact Pro, something like that. And, um, you know, guys like, you know, 
Brian Danielson came through. At one point, they were the sister promotion of Ring of Honor. Right. CM Punk was the champion for God knows how long. Homicide beat him, and then he was also champion for God knows how long. Yeah. So, all right. so now I'm glad I've got someone to back up all the stories I've told. So I've always talked about who I've seen in Crystal River at the Armory. Yeah, absolutely. And just ran through a who's who's list of people, and now... And see, I'm starting not to believe myself. I mean, I have the DVDs. I can go back and see. There was an interview a while back. I tagged you and some other people, and an MVP was like, "Yeah, when we used to go to shows like Crystal River," and it's like, "What? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah." What did MVP he, just say? Well, what was his name back then? It was uh, um, Mont- Ant- Montel Vontavious Porter. No, it was Antonio. Antonio Banks. Oh, Antonio okay. Banks. That yeah. was the name. Yes. Antonio I always Banks. forget that. There's I wonder if there's person. a correlation between him and Sasha Banks. No, no, probably right. not. Probably not. Now yeah, you just went racist. That's <laughs> what I'm Brian tends to do that. Hey, no racism what? on a podcast. <laughs> no, but uh, that went through there. I mean, uh, again, Brian Nelson, like I just named. Uh, you have the Briscoe brothers. You have. Do I swear? Slash my tires. Uh, Chris Hero, Claudio Castagnoli, aka Cesaro. I mean, a lot of these guys. Um, John Moxley, aka Dean Ambrose. Yep. It's been there's a lot of guys. He that won the uh, Curtis. What was it? The Curtis Pius Memorial. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And I mean, oh my God, that tournament was loaded with talent. My do you, goodness. Do you guys think we'll ever see the Briscoes in WWE? No. No. And here's here's why. Um, unfortunately, their characters are way too like, hey, we're white wiggers, and WWE is so not about that life. Yeah. Like they. They are like, nope, nope, nothing racial, nothing at all. Because the last time they did something racial, they got in huge trouble. So I doubt uh, it. The Briscoes are great, but they're, they're, they're probably so going to go to New Japan. They're going to they're gonna stick to New Japan. And they'll make a lot of money are doing that. Are they in that, New so. Japan? Uh, they've done New Japan before. They've oh, wrestled, they've wrestled uh, 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 oh my god, what's his name? Ricky Marvin. And, uh, and I think at the time he was teaming up with uh, 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 Genki Horiguchi, and they did a lot of tag matches then. That was good, a good time. That was a good time in my life. And they also did Pro Wrestling No, which is virtually non-existent anymore now that right. Masawa passed and stuff. So right, yeah. But yeah, no Briscoes. I don't see. Do you think the Bucks ever will be? Yeah, I think so because they like money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Bucks like money. They definitely. Like I money. think. It's going to be a big deal when it finally happens. I think so. Uh, I, there's like this, like, have you seen this? There's like this, like, fan theory that, like, they're like scouts for WWE. Have you seen this? No. Oh, surprise me. <laughs> right, here, here's why. Because everybody that they keep teaming up with end up going to WWE. Yeah. <laughs> they, oh. just, they just keep going. Like, it, it's. And, I mean, they're friends with a lot of people in WWE. And Adam Cole just got signed. And now. That's right, yeah. Who's supposedly skipping NXT. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. I could see well, that. I, I, I agree I with that not. one. I disagree with the Bennett. Bennett skipping NXT. Yeah, he really? should go to NXT. I love Mike I don't, Bennett. I don't think he's... Cr- Mike Bennett is one of those guys where it's like... He's an old schooler. And I feel like in this day and age, you have to be some sort of exciting or this signing is going to be a bust. I think it's NXT because he has Maria with him. Maybe. I mean, she is might, a name. Yeah, she's a name. But I just... Hopefully we don't have the whole, um, oh my god, what was that wrestler with wore the shorts and his wife Sable ended up becoming more famous? Mark Merrow. Oh, Mark Hopefully Merrow. Hopefully we don't oh, have god. another, Well, Mark know, Merrow's also unsafe. Like, he... Right. I, I don't know who was more unsafe with their shooting star press, Mark Merrow or Billy Kidman. And that's bad, so... <laughs> like, Billy Kidman, really? I thought... Was... Billy Kidman has crushed people's, like, esophaguses oh, with shit. his knees with the shooting that. star press. <laughs> That's why it was banned in WWE for a long time before Evan Bourne, although that was yeah. a bust of a signing, uh, came and We got some good him. stuff out of him. Yeah. Unfortunately, he just couldn't stop smoking spice. We got the best RKO ever out of, the, out of him. I, I don't oh, know. Yeah. Now that's a competition with the Seth Rollins curb stop. Yeah. That, that was <laughs> so good. Oh, God. And Randy Orton gets stale at times, but he's just... He, there's times when he's so stale, and then there's times like right now, like his stuff with mm-hmm. with Bray Wyatt has That's been incredible. miraculous. Yeah. It has been so good, and I'm glad that they gave him his 14th title. <laughs> um, I, yeah. I'm, ho- I'm I'm hoping that John Cena doesn't get his 17th. I I lo- listen, it needs to happen at WrestleMania. I'm not a hater of John Cena. 
I, there's a lot of them. 2011 and prior, I didn't like him very much. Sure. Um, but then I don't his, think he liked him. And then the <laughs> rivalry with Punk happened. Mm-hmm. And after that, he has became a different person. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, he has had my respect. I am not one of those people like, Cena sucks. Uh. No, that's Roman Reigns. But <laughs> I'm guessing. But uh, no, for, for me, um, you know, I don't want him to get 17 just because, like, does he really match up to Ric Flair? I don't think so. I, I He's good, and he's a Hall of Famer, but I don't think he matches up to I think, Ric Flair. I think he's better. Ugh, I, I, I really can't, do. I can't do it, man. I can't, I can't justify that. There's never going to be anyone who deserves it more than Cena. Ever. Oh, man. That's, that's harsh. At least not for another more generation or so. I don't know who it's going to be. That's harsh. Because, like, for me, I feel like Undertaker should have been that guy. Yeah. yeah. I, how many Undertaker should have won more championships. Maybe. He, like, he only won six. And I say no one because I'm talking about the current roster. I'm not talking about Triple H, The Rock, Stone Cold. I'm not talking about guys like that. I'm talking about current active guys. You, you, you don't see Kevin Owens or Seth Rollins being that guy? 17? Yeah. I mean, the way they're getting worked right now? Uh, or Bray Wyatt, even? Possibly. Not Bray. Probably not Bray. It took he's too long get... for Bray to get yeah. the first one, but I think if he stays on SmackDown, and hopefully though he'll go back to SmackDown sometime in the near future, because I feel like on Raw he's going to get lost in the shuffle. But uh. Kevin, yeah. maybe. But it's still, it's, it's Cena's worth it. work ethic is what it is. Well, yeah, well, yeah, that's what they're saying about Jinder Mahal, too. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're going to talk about it in a minute. Um, <laughs> but I think Cena should win the 17th. It should be an incredible match. It should be his it last sh- one. Maybe. Well, no, if he wins, it can't be his last one. Well, Tristratus <laughs> did it. They can. Tristratus did it. Tristratus won the title and then retired. The next that was night. how you Forced go. retirement, though, wasn't it? I don't think so. I think she just retired to start family, huh. I think. And she just, she won the title, and then that was it. No more I, Tristratus. I and really she's feel one of the best like ever. he could win the title and have a good six-month run with it and then give the belt up to an Adam Cole or a Finn Balor or some just to elevate that and then have an incredible match and that person retire him. Finn Balor give him the coup de grace and crush his chest or something how, like how that. How many times I wanted the last match of Undertaker to be Finn Balor. Undertaker versus the Demon. That's just... That like, writes itself. It, yeah. It's so good. Storyline-wise, I don't know if the match would have been I, that. I think so. I, I think Finn is that good. That's... I think that, that Prince Devitt is that good. That he would work Undertaker like... He, he would take the aging Undertaker who couldn't do much anymore... And work it to where he could. Yeah. He he. I mean, Taker Taker and Bray Wyatt. Although people thought it was a disappointment, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, that was great. And then you had him versus Triple H the second time, and Undertaker just looked like he didn't have enough time to prepare. He looked bad. He looked really bad and blown up in the first like three minutes. This one, he didn't look so blown up. I was at right. WrestleMania, and he didn't look so blown up. He looked like he was doing good. I just feel like Roman Reigns wasn't the right choice, especially the way they've been booking Roman, and the way that Roman kind of just sticks to like. I people used to talk about Cena's five moves of doom. <laughs> Roman Reigns is his, his two. But that's yeah. why I feel like it isn't Roman; it's creative holding him back. Because we saw Cena with the five moves of doom, and then Kevin Owens showed up, and he doesn't have five moves anymore. Roman just needs to stand up for himself, maybe backstage. I don't know. I. My thing is, I feel like Roman, you know, because he's related to The Rock. I'm sure The Rock was just like, just do what they tell you. Like, you know, like, Rock's just like, hey, man, just just don't worry about yeah, it. Well, I think that's how The Rock was. Yeah, I mean, even though know, The Rock is... But I feel like in the ring, here's the difference t- to me, is that although The Rock's like, the first, what, his first gimmick was Rocky Maivia, and it was mm-hmm. kind of racist, a little bit. It was right. a little bit racist. Yeah. And, um, and it was like, but then he kind of came up with his own thing. And then creatively, in, a, in, a, in the ring, there's no way they told him, take three stunner, oversell him to the corner. Right. Like, and like, he had the creative power planning and match-wise. I feel like Roman could take control of that aspect. He, and that's what I'm doesn't. saying. He needs to stand up for himself. He needs to do something. Because he is good. We've seen him beat... That match with Braun he just had was fucking awesome. Braun Strowman is 
underrated <laughs> as can be. Yeah. yeah. One of the best big guys I've seen. I hated him when he first came in. I thought he was Still just going to be a big. I thought he was yep. going to be a big oaf. Like yeah. just just like another Eric Rowan who's terrible. Who's and, no, he's good. We just haven't seen it. I I, I don't see the, the thing about Rowan is I've seen him on Indy on the Indy Circuit too, and I just never have seen him perform very well ever. Um, as opposed to his partner uh, <laughs> Luke Harper, who's incredible. Uh, but uh, it, like you know, you you look at um, Braun Strowman and you just look, oh, it's another strong guy or whatever. His matches, both of his matches were Big Show were awesome. And Big Show's not that easy to work anymore. Um, and then the match with Roman, he made Roman look really good. Yeah. And I, I'm thoroughly impressed, and I was completely wrong about Braun Strowman. Speaking of Big Show, when Strowman was beating up Kalisto and put him in the trash can, and oh. Big Show scared the piss out of him, <laughs> pick up trouble in your own eyes! That was fucking awesome! Big Show, I, I've, I've always gave him Ben shit. Show? Because <laughs> I don't work on Kalisto now. <laughs> <laughs> I always get Big Show shit because, like, you know, his matches ended up being like get him in the corner, punch him in the stomach a lot, punch him in the stomach sure. a lot, and then eventually he'll hit a big like that doofy spear. It's not even a spear; it's just like, um, <laughs> and then just punch him in the face and call it a day. I like the 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 punch. I I don't mind the punch. I I, I think because his hands are like. The size of that right. donkey said it's a nice boulder. That's Big Show's fist, so I, I I understand the legit punch. I think the the stigma behind it is that like he could do that at any point. When mm-hmm. he when he sticks a strike to the stomach, it's like you could have done the you could have done the punch then and and that right. it. So yep. I guess that's the stigma atta- the stigma attached to it is that like Fair. realistically, you know, he could do that at any point as yeah. opposed to the choke slam. So, but now he's starting to use that more. Would you have been one of those people chanting, please retire at him? No. Okay. No, that, 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 but that dude has worked so hard. Have you yeah. not seen the pictures? He's, yeah. he's, he's gotten yeah. ridiculously... I guess see, he's been working with Cena personally? Because he's trying to revitalize his career? Yeah. And Cena's just like, do this, do this, do this. And now he's down 50. Holy hell. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> Unfortunately, at, at that size, that height, that yeah. shredded and, is and like... That's not, and that's not steroid shredded. Like, again, no. well... Bring that up later <laughs> with Jinder Mahal. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but with Big Show, people will say please retire at him, and I think it's ridiculous because he can't put young guys over. Like Strowman, he put Strowman over. That was great. That was incredible. Big monster. I, I think the bro- break in the ring thing is starting to get tired, <laughs> though. Like the, I, the second one should have happened. Mark Henry uh, and him. Yes. Yeah. That, no, that didn't I need agree. To happen. I agree. And then Brock Lesnar and him. It's still a rumor that it wasn't supposed to happen. That one was that legit. Unlikely. Was legit. I, I don't know if that's the case. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I put a lot of stress on the ring I had. And it would take. It would take a lot, and I had I had yeah. a crappy ring, so. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes the crappiest steel is the strongest, though. <laughs> Bend as much, as opposed to WWE rings, or sometimes you'll see it. Where they'll take a bump and literally you'll see the boards and the bars lift up because the quality is so good that they won't stay in place. They'll lift up and bounce. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you never know. That could be the case <laughs> as opposed to a ring that's rusted together. Sure. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Mine was, mine was getting there. <laughs> so, yeah. What's your... Cause, okay. I'm a fan of Jinder Mahal. I love this push. Do you? Do me. Uh, Brian? Yeah. You're pointing at me. Yeah. Um... Just speak. <laughs> no, usually that would work, but right now we should point out. Uh, no, not really. Maybe it's because I don't like the character. Maybe that that's it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like how out of nowhere it is. That's what I that's don't like. That's the only thing I like. Gender ah. is good. He's good in the ring. He has a good. I promo. don't. Ag- I don't. I I don't agree with both of those aspects. And the reason why is because Mahal gets. I mean, all right. So I'll name twice. Finn Balor. Knocked him out cold. Legitimately yeah, yeah. knocked him out cold with a yeah, You know this shit happens. Yeah, but for for a form, it, it what happened was is that the point of the elbow hit the back of Finn's head. A lot of people were saying Finn shouldn't have turned his head. That's not true. You have to turn your head. It's just reaction naturally. But there's no as as a worker, I know there's no way that the point of the elbow shouldn't hit any part of the elbow. Sure. And then 
the other night on SmackDown when he wrestled Sami Zayn, popped him directly in the mouth with a back elbow from a from a German hold. Yeah. That's one of the easiest strikes to gimmick in the world. He <laughs> literally threw the elbow and hit Sami in the lip. And really? Sammy's lip was like out like out to like I don't know, his <laughs> nose length. It was I was like, this dude is unsafe and I called it out on Facebook because I'm a weirdo. So like <laughs> I, I saw that. <laughs> but like he's so unsafe and it's the second unsafe elbow in like three weeks. Or well, I sure. guess maybe like six because Spin was out for like three weeks. But I that's that's one thing. Number two, his I think his promos are brutal because he just very roided up, which I can't stand. He's all veiny and he's like flexing a hundred percent of his lifespan. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Bruce Lee and he just walks around like flexing all the time. Right. But like it sounds like he he talks like it. He's like. Rah, rah. Yeah. Like he literally talks like he's flexing all the time, like an '80s wrestler. Like, oh yeah, like it's, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like it's brutal up these days, especially when they're trying to be more realistic. Which is why they change everyone's names instead of like, um, like El Generico. He's Sam yeah. Zayn. They they bring it down to a, a, a worldly level, and I feel like it's kind of going against the grain. Now, going nerd, and I and I'm pretty sure of this is that the. The reason why they're pushing him is because WWE is expanding to India, and they yeah. need that face. And yeah. I get that. And it makes sense. Yes. And I get that. I do. Which is why I think it's a short little push, hopefully. Um, I think it'll last I, two, three months. I, I'm hoping it's short and he never wins the title. I'm <laughs> hoping. But the worst part of this, and I, a lot of people might disagree with me with this, but the worst part of this is that it's giving the Bollywood boys TV time, <laughs> and that's <laughs> They're not good. Even in the Cruiserweight Classic, I was at the Classic. I went and I went to watch. First and first hand, without the editing that they gave in the shows, and sorry they sure. did. Um, the Bollywood Boys were terrible in both of their matches. And, like, it just saw, just watching I like their gimmick. The, the, the gimmick is, yeah. is good, but that's pretty much all they got. Because, like, even even the, here in Crystal River, they were at the NXT show. Remember? Yeah. They were here at the yeah. NXT show. They I were, was wondering. I was it like, was bad. Yeah, because they weren't really good. Bad. Like and, I've, I was kind of surprised. I, was, I, I expected more. I now the only good thing about this is that the, the, uh, the push for Jinder Mahal has caused and, and and you know, Middle Eastern people has caused Mustafa Ali to get pushed on two hundred five live. I met this guy. I have worked with him in Chicago. He is the real deal. He is exactly what Cruiserweight. He did it too. What's that? Jinder Mahal's not Middle Eastern. Well, that's the that's the whole point because yeah. they're pushing a Middle Eastern, quote unquote, person. Because Indian. they're, it's. I mean, oh yeah, okay, that is such an American thing. <laughs> oh okay, at the I'm uh, Cuban at the, <laughs> at the NXT show, because um, I did not watch SmackDown before. So when the Bollywood boys came out and everyone's chanting uh, "gender sucks," yeah. I'm like, "Wow, guys, that is super racist." Because I did not know that they were helping gender at the time. I was like, "Oh my god!" And then Davari came out and they were chanting. Oh, I like Arya Davari too. Yeah. They were chanting "gender sucks" at him too, and I was like, "He's not oh. helping. He's not helping him though." But because I was Arya like, Davari's not racist, helping him, guys. I love yeah. uh, Arya Davari, and and again. Fuck you if you disagree. He's better than Sean Davari. I think he's... I remember being a really big fan of Sean Davari, so I'm not... Well, I think that when he was in WWE, he never wrestled. He just was Kali's mouthpiece. I think he had a couple matches, but yeah, I don't think they were good. But, like, you watch him in, like, WZW, like, war games where they had the two rings and stuff, and you see what Davari did, and Davari was very, like, more like WCW Cruiserweight stuff, sure. and it was really good, Um, but I still think Ari Davari is, like... He's really good. He's, yeah. he's, he's good, top yeah. notch, and and again, Mustafa Ali uh, getting all the relation push as well is really is good stuff because Mustafa Ali, the fact that when you can bring WWE is a Fed that bans so many moves, and when you can bring the imploding 450 to WWE and not get it banned, <laughs> says something yeah. about you. So you know, I, when it comes to him. I'm so glad he's getting pushed. That the 205 Live needs to be watched more because they're they're gonna get rid of it soon. No, <laughs> I think it's doing well from what I've read. Uh, well, from from what I heard, it's like they're trying to shake things up now because the views aren't they they expected it to be NXT views mm-hmm. and it's not that right now. Um, and they want to start mixing stuff up. I was hoping that they were just gonna send Kalisto Stone Sin Carter to 205 Live. Why wouldn't you? Like they, yeah. they're getting lost. Uh, Sin Cara's getting lost in the shuffle on one Sin brand. Kalisto's getting lost in the shuffle on another. 
Yeah. Just, just bring them to 205 Live. That's Sinkara's adding more star power. They need to push them. I think Sin Cara's 205, I think. I think he's 205. He looks um, like he's bigger than that. Sin Cara? Well, so does Tony Nese. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Short, though. Tony Nese is like... Yeah. Uh, even my wife saw like Tony Nese and was like, there's no way he's 205 pounds. What's this thing? He's like the supreme athlete or something? He, the, uh, yeah, I think it's like the superior athlete or something. You know what's funny about Tony Nese? Me and him saw him on a PWG show. PWG show oh, yeah. And we're like, well, he's fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> we did not like him in the slightest well, he, bit. Yeah, now, I, saw him awesome. in, I saw him in... Uh, in the in the other one, the long title I'm probably gonna muff up if I try to talk it. So, the um, Impact. Oh yeah, total nonstop action Impact Wrestling presented by Anthem. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. So I know Fuck if that I, owl. I know I know. Fuck <laughs> that <laughs> owl. I know if I try to do that, I'm gonna muff it up and sound terrible. But so like it, he was really good. He was known as Anthony Neeson, and he was really. I don't good think on I knew that. he was in TNA. Yeah, he he had a short time. He had a short time there, and then he went to and then I don't he said, pay attention to TNA. Well, I don't blame him. Every day I keep it a secret. <laughs> it's a big secret around here. Yeah. It, it, listen, look, there's talent there. There's always talent there. Like, yeah. like just signed, who just got signed, Drew Galloway, a.k.a. Drew McIntyre. He just, he was TNA champion not too long ago. I mean, they had the talent. They just have terrible management. EC3 is a reason to watch TNA. Oh, that hurt my heart because I can't really? stand Ethan I Carter. I love Ethan Carter. I don't know Ethan Carter. <laughs> he is mm, uh, all right. So I've seen. I guess to me, <laughs> I've seen him on Evolve shows, and I've seen. And he just gets outshined by everyone else. For me, he's not terrible. I'll, I'll I'll say that he's not terrible. But yeah, so like I feel like unfortunately, he gets outshined by everyone else, like on Evolve and everyone and everywhere else. He yeah, just, it, it's it's very. I, I would say Jinder Mahal esque, essentially. Like, what? Well, I, I think that's because he's like good worker. That's it. Maybe, but I mean, I, 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 I look at guys who can show, who can work out of. A, he he can work out of like I don't know the most complicated treasure map in the world. He gets no credit for it, but he <laughs> yeah. can. And uh, like uh, with Ethan, I guess for me, I need to see him really like, in a. 20 minute to 30 minute match where you just go hard. Those where don't you just, happen anymore. It, well, on the indie scene, or at least on the popular indie scene, it does. Sure. Like, like PWG, Evolve, stuff like that. I don't know that he's ever really done that. Well, I, I did see him at an Evolve show. Okay. And it was, it was him, I believe it was him and Drew Galloway versus TJ Perkins whole, and, and Johnny yeah. Gargano. And it was kind of implied they were attacking WWE. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was that. Which, by the way, good show, <laughs> very good show. The main event was the worst part, but um, <laughs> is that the one Triple H showed up to? No, okay. I wish. <laughs> I wish because I would have lost my mind as a fan. Um, but for me, um, no, like I said, Ethan Carr. I just want to see him actually work. I guess for me, every single every single time I see him work, he does like the old school half ass. No, there's not a lot of people here, so I'll just half ass it. Uh, I want to see him actually get in there and get dirty with like his feel like it could matter if there's two people or yeah, if there's right. thousands they just get grimy every time they work and I feel like it, it shows with Ethan Carter Ethan Carter for me is a good worker maybe not a great worker his promos are so good I completely agree with he's you. such a good character I, I completely agree with you on that one his promos are, are incredible yeah another guy whose promos are incredible even though I hate his wrestling is the Miz Yes. Oh, I've talked many times about how much I love The Miz. He's a good worker. He's not a great worker. My, he's a my, good my worker. complaint about The Miz always has been like skull crushing finale. Okay. I feel like it's an anticlimactic finisher for him. Um, for me, I feel like the most devastating move in his move set is in the skull crushing finale. And it, as basic and as as crazy as I might, as I might come off, the kneeling DDT that he does, everyone takes it so good. Like Cena takes it amazing. You have, you know, guys that he works all the time. Uh, Seth Rollins takes it amazing. And I feel like it has so much more of an impact visually sure. and, like, in a realistic sense. So I feel like the sk Skull Crushing finale is completely anticlimactic. I always think that kneeling DDT is the finish. I always like it. I'm like, yeah. oh my it's god. so good. That's the finish. No. I felt really bizarre and I thought this was a for sure thing was he was going to start using the Yes Lock. 
Yeah. But can I mean, can you imagine the skull crushing finale and then just switch? No, that would be that would be beautiful. That would be perfect. <laughs> if, if he if he would do that, that would be great. And he because started it would be doing perfect. Daniel's kicks and stuff. That and they were doing that, you know, not in the ring feud, but just. Yeah. I just thought that that's where that was going, and it just didn't happen. Well, yeah, and then he went to Raw. Like, is he still going to use it now? It wouldn't make he sense. He still uses the kicks. Yeah, I think that's not going to make sense on Raw, right? Because he just had that whole thing yeah. with Daniel Bryan. I think he should still do it. I just think that the Skull Crushing finale into the... Because the idea of the Skull Crushing finale is you knock him the fuck out. Right. So you put him in the yes lock, and the ref's just like, oh, no, he's knocked out, ring the bell. Yeah, I mean... That would be great! Or or even put him in, like, a, the Gargano escape, almost, where, like, you throw their arm completely over. Yeah. Oh, it'd be so good. And he did start using the figure four. Um, which was good! I don't know was, why he Which stopped. was okay. Which was oh, okay. he probably stopped because of Charlotte. Yeah, I think he might have stopped because of I've, Charlotte. But Charlotte yeah. does the figure eight now, which is awesome. I've always, I've always, always, always pictured someone bridging with the figure four. Yeah. Because I had... One of my old young boys who doesn't work anymore, unfortunately, and he was so good. He used to do a figure four where he would lock the legs as normal, and instead of putting your leg over the leg that's crossed, he would literally take his foot, push it, uh, ah. push your foot, and just push as far as he can. <laughs> and it was the most dickish figure four, but it hurt so bad. I was like, you, you, you could absolutely use that as a finisher. <laughs> and like, ugh. like I can go on for days when it comes to finishers. Yeah. WWE, because I, like. Be, Especially like Cesaro, how anticlimactic his finisher is. Oh yeah, I'm he, not even trying to find out what it is. It's a, he, it, the the like it's an elevated pedigree almost like Gotch style. Like he's gonna do the Jerry Lynn Powell driver and then face plants them. What's it called? I think it's it's called the um, oh my gosh. Uh, Fuck, uh, when was the last time he used that? He he still uses it. And then he uses it to finish tag team matches with with Sheamus sometimes. Um, it's called like the Terminator or something. It's something like that. I, I think I I think I've seen it. But like, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it's almost like a reverse skull crushing finale. Yeah, I get, I guess, <laughs> and, and like, or or like I said, like almost like, like a God style elevated kind of yeah. <laughs> and like, and that the reason why I don't like that is because he hits the Swiss death. Yeah, he, he'll sit there, pop him, hit the ear up, and then pick him up and do I that. It's, it's so yeah. it's like romantic. I think it seems like it's too dangerous. I don't know that it actually is all that dangerous, but it seems like it's too dangerous. Yeah, I, I, when he first came to WWE, I liked it because he I didn't think it. he was gonna be able to do. The I, Swiss I've seen death. him do it in WWE, and like then he started doing the Swiss Death, and I was like, yeah. well, why don't you just finish people off with it? That was, was his yeah. finisher before. Right? Yeah, it was. It was one of his finishers. It yeah. was that and the Ricola bomb. Ricola bomb. That's right. Why don't they do that? It's a cross arm power bomb. It's I don't a understand. Fuck move. <laughs> I don't yeah. understand. And and then oh by the way, speaking of Roman Reigns, he I t- said he has those two moves of doom. He's done the Splash Mountain a couple of times. The cru- the sit out crucifix power bomb. It's so good. He needs yeah. to use that as a finisher. <laughs> I wish he would. And stop the spear. Oh please, we're, we're just talking get rid about of the that spear. on the way in. Yeah, oh. just, Guys, stop. I don't hate him having it because I think someone should have it. Charlotte does the spear. Charlotte doesn't need to do the spear. Charlotte doesn't do it that. Charlotte does the spear. Rhino does the spear. Then we have Goldberg, who might, who what comes back every whatever. Could not care less about Goldberg. <laughs> I hope. I hope. I mean, I I completely agree. I I hated the match of Mania. I hated the whole storyline because I hate Brock Lesnar too. Yeah, I hate the match of Mania. It was fun. Uh, but that was like the worst part of the show for me. Um. Oh well, yeah. Especially like, yeah, okay. and I feel bad. The six pack challenge for the Divas, uh, where Naomi won the title back. That match potentially could have been amazing, but they had to cut time short for Roman Reigns and Undertaker. I feel like, yeah. all right, we're jumping around a lot. What were we talking yeah. about? Five <laughs> Sorry. seconds ago. <laughs> Five seconds ago. There's no telling. Yeah. Sorry. We were it talking is. about Cesaro. We were, okay. Oh finishers. yeah, yeah, the finishers, finishers. Yeah, I like, really like finishers, where it's like one move into a submission. Like I've always combos I've, are great. I have two finishers in mind. I have the... Ah, I can't... Is it like a Death Valley into the rock bottom? I don't know what Yeah, okay, okay, that. yeah, I got Kenny you. King does it, I believe. Yeah. I also <laughs> think it would be really cool to do maybe like a swing DDT into a... Um, oh my god, a rear naked choke. Okay. Or yeah, I can see that. Just, just grab them, wrap your legs around them, and drop them into a DDT. Yeah. That'd be cool as hell. I understand that. See, like, for me, like, my gimmick, like, so I'm the never-ending arsenal, so... I have finishers, I have a lot of moves, because it's kind of my gimmick, and I have three main finishers, but then I also have, like, you know, if they're, if my scouting report, quote-unquote, quotation marks in the air, sorry for audio listeners, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, uh, it, 
if they're not good on the ground, I'm going to make them tap out with something. If they're not good at strikes, I'm going to knock them out with a, with a strike. And that's kind of how my gimmick is. And for me, like, I have... I like doing... Have you guys ever heard of the Japanese wrestler Masato Yoshino? I don't think so. Okay, so he's a Dragon Gate guy. And the okay. main one. Um, and he was one half of the one of the greatest tag teams, in my opinion. And then Speed Muscle, it's Masato Yoshino and Naruki Doi. Um, they were incredible. And he did a move called the Sol Naciente. And what that is, for with your arms, while you're laying on your back, standing up, puts his foot behind your neck, rolls forward, and then you end up standing up while he has you in a chokehold when he's Jesus. laying down. Huh. I do that move. And I use his whole combo because I don't care if I stole it. He's my he's probably my favorite wrestler of all time. And he does arm trap stunner, boom. Then he does the uh, the La Mystica where he does like the head scissors into the arm into like the Fujiwa arm bar. That's awesome, yeah. And then flips them over and does the Sol Naciente all in one big motion. Jeez. And I saw Sounds the beautiful. first the first time I ever saw it, I said that that thing is incredible. I need to use that. Cause, and I use it for people that, um, like, say, they had an arm injury. Okay, well, finger for arm lock. Like, you know, it's just, um, it, that's, like, my whole thing. So, like, I get that. I, I'm a big combo boy. I'm a big, big combo guy. Especially for a little guy. So, does it make you upset they took away all of Apollo Crews combos? Eh. Cause that's Apollo Crews' Apollo Apollo combos are cool. Yeah. I never liked them as a finisher, essentially. Um, I liked them to do it just... just because it's a cool combo, yeah. um, but you know, I think the the throw out, the throwing spin out power bomb is actually a good finisher for him. I don't mind it so much. I like the whole bouncing off the rope, spinning around power bomb. Yeah, no, 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 I absolutely like. I don't know I, why. I, like, I know WWE does a lot of things because it's dangerous. I don't feel like that's dangerous. No, I, again, like the recoil bomb. Like, yeah, they make weird decisions. They they do. It, there's a lot of weird decisions that they. Um, make. I mean, what, wasn't there that whole thing? Like, they were going to legit, not a work, but they were going to legit ban the Styles Clash. He still does the Styles Clash. <laughs> well, I think that discussion happened because of the people getting injured. Yeah, the people that took it like this? It was wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whereas, like, you watch the video and you're like, they did it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, uh, he almost killed Ellsworth. Did you see that? Uh, he almost killed Ellsworth with it. And uh, because Ellsworth put his head I down. And AJ... Happened. AJ saw it and literally like overshot it and face bumped so that way like I want Ellsworth you to landed AJ like checks now. Oh, I've got. Oh, he's. I'm sure he has to. Yeah, yeah I, I AJ, think for years he probably didn't because it never happened. Can, can someone explain to me why he doesn't do the spiral tap no more? What is the spiral tap? The spar It's the three. It's the three sixty senton where like he is on the top rope and he literally like the three sixties jumps off three sixties lands on his back. A senton, and he used to use it as a finisher. He's the one that invented it. He never uses it. Maybe anymore. because he's getting higher up in age, and he wants to stop taking bumps like that. I guess, but that's that seems easier than the springboard 450 that he scorpion bumps almost every time. Like when he does the springboard 450, he always overshoots, hits his knees on the person, and face plants and scorpion bumps, mm, as yeah. opposed to the spiral tap where he lands on his back. It's like doing a swanton. Explain what a scorpion bump is. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I guess for people who've ever watched Ridiculousness or anything, like they have a thing called scorpion where you land on your face, you land on your face, and you just kind of have your legs go over while your face is still on the floor to where you do a really bad back bend. Like a scorpion down. Yeah. That makes sense now. I thought it was a wrestling thing I've never heard before. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I guess guess for me, I I use it as as a reference because it's visually, like, the easiest way to call it is scorpion. (laughs) Uh, But, like, yeah. So, like, and I feel like the bump for the spiral tap is so much easier. And he doesn't have the springboard to do it. Yeah. Like, it's it's definitely a weird choice, at least by AJ, if not by WWE. So what would you say is your favorite finisher of all time, Brian? Oh, jeez. Um... That's a hard one. Yeah. So, um, jeez. Oh, the categories <laughs> like, like your favorite like Ooh. Japanese finisher, which will obviously never come to WWE <laughs> or stuff. Like, it, it's so hard because like if it, you come up with that kind of thing, you're never gonna pick a WWE finisher. Right. I would think. No, probably not. Oh man, I don't know. Mine's a package pile driver. Okay. It's good. Yeah. It's a good finisher. I mean. 
I mean, it's really hard not to pick the Canadian Destroyer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, let, my, my only problem with the Canadian, even though I've taken Canadians, I've given Canadians, it was my finisher at one point, but that was because I was, like, I had an old finisher that just didn't get over, so I had to just come up with something quick until I figured something else out. Um, but, like, for me, the Canadian is just so unrealistic. Yeah, yeah. it is pretty unrealistic, which is kind of why I chose it. But you see it and you're like, what just happened? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, I get that. Oh, oh yeah, it, it makes you go, what just happened? I remember the first time I saw it, this, it was before, you know, DVR, so I couldn't rewind it. Right. But I know next time, uh, you know, TLC, I got to see it again, you know? So I was waiting for Team Canada to come on, and, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's, that's why I'm going to stick with that one. Okay. I think uh, one of my uh, other favorites is actually Seamus' bicycle kick. Dude, he's so mean with it. It's one of the meanest bicycle kicks I've ever seen. It's just so And kicked good. out Jeff Hardy's tooth the other day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, Seamus gets a lot of shit. That finisher, that's one of my finishers of the video game. Hey, I can see it. It's um, just such a good one. So my favorite finisher of all time is by far the Steiner Screwdriver. Bro, the, Sky, the Steiner Screwdriver is, like, as a move, it's so creative. It's realistic because you're getting lifted up into a suplex. And, that, and you know, that can happen at any point. Especially if you're really knocked out and the person's strong enough, like Scott Steiner. And, and if you, for those of you who don't know who the Steiner Screwdriver is, it's almost like a Falcon Air. Where, you, you know, suplex lift, face him forward, and instead of the back bump, they come straight down into a tombstone. Like, into oh, a okay. fire thunder. Right. And that move has always been, like, one of my all-time favorite <laughs> moves in general. I'm a short guy. I can't do the screwdriver to people. But if I was tall enough, I absolutely would. So are, you, are you happy with Scott Steiner's back in TNA? No. Okay. He's awful now. <laughs> we had a pretty good discussion about that a couple podcasts ago. No. Yeah. When, when him and Rick Steiner were at their heyday in Japan. No doubt, yeah. Fuck yeah. At 40-whatever years old and steroided out like a, I don't know, he's just a walking rock. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> and now he's in total non-stop action impact wrestling presented by Anthem, and I just don't understand why. <laughs> what? I love the joke. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, in Del Rio, it really pissed me off, because I can't remember if it was right before or right after, that piece of shit Alberto Del Rio was like, Oh, total non-stop action impact wrestling and presented by Anthem. It just presents like all these young people, and it gives us all opportunity to be a total non-stop anthem. I would, I would. Uh, argue, and then Steiner showed up, and it's like, what the fuck? I would <laughs> all these young people. I would yeah. argue that Lucha Underground, PWG, and Evolve are better at doing that than TNA. No is. doubt. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I, sp- I mean, Lucha Underground. I mean, even Ricochet, even though everyone, everyone in the world knows who Ricochet is, if you're a wrestling fan, because Ricochet is Ricochet, and he is, I, in my opinion, best indie talent going, period, on the planet. Him indie? and Kenny Omega. He's, and, and Adam Cole. I don't, I, I, I don't think Adam Cole still matches up with a Ricochet and Kevin uh, and Kenny Omega's, like, tier. But see, I look at guys, but I, he's, I, he's He's, like, right below. Right. I think I look at guys maybe a little bit differently than you do. I look at them as a total package. I got you. Ricochet, to me, isn't that great of a promo guy. Okay, um, fair enough. Um, oh, Omega is. Oh, Omega is um, in a, a league of his own, I think. <laughs> Adam Cole is just the total package, and I love that. I probably look at it that way because I'm primarily a WWE guy, and that's what you have to be right. to be in the WWE. Absolutely. Ricochet, I don't know if I've ever really seen his promos. Well, I guess I guess for me, actually, I, I've seen a lot of his promos as Prince Puma and Lucha. Yeah. And Lucha, he, he promos a little yeah. bit. I, I mean, they're not the greatest, but I haven't seen an issue with them. Um, but None of them just, stand out his, in my mind. His talent is just, it, yeah. it's through the roof. Like, the guy is insane. And if could you imagine if they actually took the chance, brought Evan Bourne back, and then they did Ricochet and Evan Bourne in the turn. Oh, my God, dude. Like, tag team or few as a tag team, because they're a tag team in New Japan, right? Now. And oh, huh. the it, like the matches with those two, you have you have Evan Bourne or I'm sorry Matt Seidel because he's not in WWE anymore, and Ricochet versus Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Oh, Red Dragon, dude, ugh, <laughs> so good, man. 
Like, honestly, I think Kyle, Kyle O'Reilly has pa- surpassed his teacher. I think he's better than Davy Richards. Like, he's yeah. Yeah. incredible. And I, I don't even know, I, I've always been a big Davy fan. Funny story about Davy, I think I've told us on the podcast. I went to a TNA show a while back. Mm-hmm. It was when they were doing the one night onlys. Uh, the only one we got to go to was the women's one, which was good. I actually I got to see Matt Hardy versus Austin Aries. Oh, that's that good was stuff. really good. That's good stuff. We were standing. In I still hate Matt. And the only thing I don't like about Matt is his movements because he he has rickety legs. But other than that, I, I, Matt Hardy's always been <laughs> like yeah. he just moves awkwardly. Huh, but he does. Nothing bad. I've noticed. Moves I've awkwardly. noticed for sure. But, uh, but we were standing in between the bleachers as you walk in, and we were just watching the match. I think. I was just standing there and noticed, you know, out of the corner of my eye, there's a guy standing next to me with a towel mm-hmm. on his shoulders and looked at him. It's like, oh. Oh, that's David Richards! <laughs> and, and I'm just like, because I, a thing about me is I stopped watching wrestling for a long time. Okay. I heard about Young Wolves Rising, Kevin Steen versus David Richards. And I started watching Kevin Steen, like, this guy's awesome. Well, I started watching the matches. This is awesome. Started watching Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole. I love this. Yeah. Got into Tommaso Ciampa and all these other guys. I love this shit. Got me back into wrestling. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's these standing next to Davey Richards, and I'm just like, oh! <laughs> I didn't say anything to him. I oh, regret okay. it to this day. But I've well, also heard that he's a dick. He has headphones on. Yeah, that, that was just it. I, he had headphones in. Funny story about wrestlers being a dick. We talked about before the podcast. Oh, yeah, that's right. That <laughs> My I trained at, F- at FIP, right? And, of course, a big commodity at FIP for a long time, including being a champion, was Roger Strong. Mm-hmm. Oh, I what? got a question for you about an FIP yeah. guy. What, what, what have you done? Okay. All right. So mm-hmm. I was training, and, of course, mm-hmm. you know, we were newbies. We were, we were in it for about we, – we've been training for about three months at this point. Roger Strong is the champ. And I was joking with Roddy, right? Roddy, a, a man I knew, complete face at this point, at this moment in time, like super uber John Cena face at this okay. point uh, of the promotion at this point. Is this when he was feuding with Eric Stevens? Uh, about right around that time. Um, and so I was like, you know, it was like five dollars to get a picture and get an autograph from Roddy. Okay, cool, whatever. Went up, Roddy. Hey, here's my five dollars. And then he's and he. Not only did he take my five dollars, took it out of my hand, ripped it, and then like stormed off, like almost, um, like he was offended <laughs> that I that as a trainee I asked, and I for the next six months I, I was training there, I always tried to talk to him and ask him, and he would not speak a word to me. Ever since then, I'm just like, you know what, Roddy, fuck you, I don't Damn. like you. You're a piece oh. of shit. Like, it, he, he almost, like, I mean, to me, he's not, obviously not as bad as Teddy Hart. Because Teddy Hart is Teddy Hart. But, like, that's a really dick, that's a really dick move to do. Especially to a trainee. <laughs> like, he might eventually work in the future. Like, it's so difficult for me to, be like, rooting for him. And they're trying to make him seem all, like, oh, I came from a broken home, blah, 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 on NXT. And although it may be true, he's still a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it, it was it was hard for me. That um, I've had some bad experiences in locker rooms like that. Like Roger, Ro- Roddy was hard because if anyway, because his some of his back breakers are so yeah. unsafe, dude. Like, uh, I remember I remember he was being unsafe with Samoa Joe at uh, TIP two thousand four, I believe it was the Tom Petty Invitational, which is IWA Mid South. Okay, and at this point, CM Punk was there, Homicide was there, a lot of the, a lot of these guys. And one of the matches was Samoa Joe versus Roderick Strong. And the clip that you'll ever see of, of Samoa Joe doing the ST Joe and the dude landing directly onto his skull was Roddy. And it was because <laughs> it was because he was being unsafe to, to Joe. And Joe Joe beat the shit out of him for the remainder of that match. He freaking gave him the ST Joe. He landed on his skull, which no one ever does. Always Everyone always backbones that. And then he runs over the Roddy right away and just stomps directly. There was no gimmick stomp the ring with it. He just stomped directly <laughs> onto his nose. I was like, oh shit. Because <laughs> that Samoa Joe is one human being I would not want to fuck with. No. Samoa Joe ain't he, nothing to fuck with. He's on that list for me too. Yeah, yeah. I know. Dude. And it, it's weird because like I feel like... Alright, so I've always been um, uh, compared to Tyson Kidd because of my looks. Like everyone says I kind of look like Tyson Kidd. And then I heard what happened with Samoa Joe and, like, him, like, getting hurt with the 
But we're going back to the finisher, like, conversation. Um, look at the clip. It was like nothing happened. It was a normal muscle buster. It wasn't Joe doing, like, some. sometimes to give a receipt, he'll kind of scrunch him up, kind of make him that bump. Uh, Tyson Kidd. Well, I didn't realize that Samoa Joe injured him. Yeah, dude, he broke his neck. Like, oh, Tyson Jesus. Kidd's, like, out of commission. And he still signed the WWE contract. But right, I didn't know that was from Samoa Joe. Yeah, it was from okay. a muscle buster. And back bump, it was the normal muscle buster. Yeah, because he's not doing the straight down muscle buster. Yeah, no, and, and sometimes to give him a receipt, he'll fold him a little bit more and make him kind of upper shoulder neck bump. He did that to Roddy, by the way. But, um, but no, it was as clean as can be, and Tyson Kidd's neck just went bye-bye. And now yeah. he's not doing a muscle buster anymore. As you've seen, he's doing, like, that weird pull-in rock bottom thing. And I guess they pretty much sold Muscle Buster as a no-go anymore. It, well, because Tyson Kidd. Maybe. We just watched a match he did the Muscle Buster against Finn. A NXT? In Dallas, yeah. Yeah, NXT. That was like a year ago, though. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah, and NXT, they, they're pretty lenient sometimes. Like they, oh, yeah. Like, NXT, for some reason, they... Shit, the Cruiserweight are, Challenge, they did the... Uh, oh, my God. The... Any other time I could come up with it. The Burning Hammer. There. Oh, yeah. That was weird. And, and Kendrick. <laughs> killed who was one. That might have been the best Burning Hammer I've ever seen done by someone that's not named Kabashi. Right. It was so good. How did he convince them to let him do that? It's about as crazy I, as... I'm um, actually surprised that Cedric Alexander is still doing the lumbar check. I feel like that's such... Yeah. That, that's a move WWE is usually like, nope. But they're still letting him do it. Which, by the way, I wrestled Cedric Alexander. I met him in North Carolina. What a fucking great human being so good and he works like a pillow it's great i'm glad it's, that's <laughs> awesome because i know i don't think he was supposed to get signed by wwe and then he had that no, match with coda uh, yeah but i don't think originally huh? he was going to be one of the guys that got signed and then he had that incredible match and triple h came out and was like yeah, yeah. i guess and, i have to sign him <laughs> and he's and he's hurt now um, yeah unfortunately but it, the the uh the only thing the, literally there's only one person on 205 live other than the ball with voice that i don't like and that's noem dar yeah. Uh, As a heel, though, or like just... uh, no, I, I think I think his work in the ring is very boring. Um, and I gotta tell you, his promos are actually kind of brutal. Even though like he's getting yeah. over as a heel, his promos are really hard to watch. I haven't taken a shine to him, so I can't really disagree with you. Yeah, like I, I like him though. He's had good matches. He's, he's he's okay, but I guess for me, like he's kind of boring and like, and like again, his promos are just. Oh god, they're horrible to watch. <laughs> they're awful. Um, but you know, so far he's been making a name for himself because for a while there, two of five live only had one heel. And it was Norm Dar. Yeah. Uh, and then Drew Gulak just came up with his new gimmick. Yeah, and, the no fly zone, which is awesome. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, no fly it's zone. It's so good, dude. It's I don't so care. dumb, but it's it's so, so good. dumb, but in the best way. It's in yeah. the, it's dumb in the great wrestling. I want to. I I like to imagine that he brought that up Triple H and Triple H's like that. Really, yeah. I can imagine that. And then and then you have Tony Nese who tries to be a heel, but he doesn't do anything except for flex his muscles to try yeah. to be a heel. Great talent, but he needs to work on actually being a heel more. And then they turn T J Perkins heel, which is incredible. Yeah. So uh, so far I love. How do you it. feel about that he's not T J Perkins anymore? He's T J P. That's fine with me. Yeah, I, I always call him T J P yeah. anyway. I guess I just thought it was weird. I it's, it's just weird, this heel but... thing. It was also like a weird thing where they went from Antonio Cesaro to just Cesaro, but but yeah, I, that I feel like I don't know. They they did that with a couple people. They did it with Sheamus too. Sheamus O'Shaughnessy. I don't remember that. When he came out of FCW, he was Sheamus O'Shaughnessy. Oh, that's and terrible. Had, <laughs> and he had one of my favorite gimmicks on on FCW. He wore a he wore like red wrist tape up to like his elbow, right? On, on his right arm, I'm sorry, on his right arm. And then on his left arm, it was a black sleeve all the way to his shoulder. And the red was his sword. The left was, oh, his, not, right. was his shield. I remember oh. that now. And yeah. that's such a cool gimmick. And then he just started booting people in the face. I mean, he said, he's, well. doing the <laughs> he's doing the warrior oh. thing. Oh, no. Now, I, so I, maybe no, he'll I bring love, it back. Yeah, no, I love, I love the gimmick that he's doing now. I, I, yeah, him that he has arrow. been since he came up. Him it's just... The uh, it's just for some when, when FCW didn't have a lot, but that was one of my favorite gimmicks they ever came up with in FCW. Which, by the so way, I don't know if you know this. WWE listens to our podcast because oh, yeah. we said Shazaro and they said Shazaro last week. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so they listen. You're welcome, guys. Yeah. Royalties. Send yeah. them our way. <laughs> yeah, 
please. Um, yeah, Chris Braddock, you know, you can always sign me. I'm always available. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, uh, listen, I'll, I'll never bash WWE for anything they do. I, I, like, I, it's too easy to. It, it, not only is it too easy to sometimes, but I feel like they do it on purpose a lot. For example, the reason why Sami Zayn hasn't got a push. Tell me they're not just sticking it to the nerds by oh, yeah. never giving they're him a push. It. I'm okay with that. You think so? Yeah. You think they're going to save it to like where it's this big like Daniel Bryan type thing? It's going to be him and Kevin. I, dude, if that happens, I will not only lose my mind, but I don't know. I, don't I know am well. a huge <laughs> Sami Zayn fan. I have an El Generico signed mask. Me too. I am biggest El Generico fan. He's just, right. he's the best. And what's funny was, I remember when I got into wrestling, uh, I saw El Generico on the ROH website. Like, what the fuck is a stupid gimmick? That guy's terrible. <laughs> that was my favorite. The greatest. My favorite El Generico moment video of him and Colt Cabana. Yeah. When they're going around with the money, just throwing money at people doing ordinary <laughs> things. Like, there's a guy working out, he's throwing money at him like, like they're in a strip club. There's a janitor mopping the floor, they're throwing money at him like they're in a strip club. And then they've got, like, their fanny packs on and stuff. And they go to, like, the woman's locker room and, like, they're showering and getting dressed. And they're just, like, they're looking at each other like, I don't I don't get this. I don't know what's so great about this. Yeah. <laughs> like, they have no interest in there. That's one of my favorite videos ever. Yeah, I feel like they're saving Sammy. Like, he's, he's not going to get, like, an I think they're push. teasing he's... the hell out when, of like, when he got When he got the SmackDown, I swore. I was like, this is it. Here it comes. Maybe. Sammy's finally going to get his push. You gotta remember, he technically just got here. Well, yeah, but like, like for example, the battle Roy- the the Andre the Giant battle royal. Yeah. All right, so I'm not gonna talk about Mojo Rawley, please, because I, it, I will go on forever for how terrible he is. So I won't talk about him. But, <laughs> but like, I swore Sami Zayn was gonna win, and I knew if Sami Zayn won that, that like sky's the limit now. Like it's happening, and I was rooting I so was hard. Right. Yeah. And then what happened happened, and. I was like, well, shit. <laughs> I don't hate it. I hate that nothing's happened because of it. Well, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I, I just... Ro- uh, Mojo Raleigh, dude. Like, he shouldn't even be on the main roster right now. Probably I, not. And I, I feel Mojo, like he rode Zack Ryder's coattails. I'm a Mojo Raleigh fan, and I don't feel like he's ready yet. I, I, I think he rode Zack Ryder's coattails, who's up, who unfortunately is hurt. Um, but, and Zack Ryder should get more than what he's gotten so far. Zach's awesome. He's incredible. Um, and, and especially the stuff he's done, like, you know, uh, on, um, like, the internet. He's the one that made WWE's, like, internet prowess so huge. Yeah. He's the one that kind of started it with his YouTube channel and stuff. And then WWE's like, huh, maybe we should take advantage of this. Yeah. And, yeah. and now the WWE Network, which, I, tell me they haven't made so much money from the WWE Network. Like, they've made so much money. Although you're not getting the $60 every pay-per-view, they're, feeding you $120 a year. Like, oh, yeah. you're, you're, well, there's no way. Like, I pay more than that work. I don't care. I'm yeah. not ashamed. I watch it a lot. <laughs> Why am I not going to pay for it? Um, Even but, if you only watch it for the pay-per-views, you got your money's worth. Exactly. Yeah. Or And then NXT and 205 Live on top of it. They're about to come out with the British UK show. And yeah. then the women's t- tournament, which they announced and then haven't talked a lot about since. That's coming soon. That was very Charlotte. Was yeah. she up on the stage? And awesome. So cool. It was awesome. Did you see who showed up at NXT Live show? I think it was about a month ago. Candice LeRae showed up on an NXT Live show in Orlando about a month really? ago. Really? And I, I, don't know I, the I name. Candice LeRae, Ryan? PWG. Oh, duh. Okay, God. <laughs> and she's incredible. And like, she's one of the best women's wrestlers on the planet. She's so oh, good. No she's doubt, always yeah. And I feel like she's gonna be part of the women's tournament, and that alone makes me excited, which tells me. There's potential that Mia Yim might be on there. Yes. And she's and she's incredible. You have all these girls. Gail Kim. Is Ga- all I want. Uh, I I hope th- there's two sides of Gail Kim. She's a double edged sword. There's the Gail Kim that got really stale and my WWE released her, yeah. and then there's the good Gail Kim. And if, as long as she's that one, it's all good. We're gonna be good. Um, but I mean, they've been bringing in so much talent from Shimmer that it's in, it's yeah. insane. <laughs> Ember Moon is. Incredible. Tina. I always knew she was good. Um, I wasn't familiar with her at all. Oh, dude. Sh- I-, I watched a lot of Shimmer 
I, um, I haven't watched any. I, I've watched a lot of Shimmer. So that's why I was also excited for Ruby Riot. Yeah. Kimberly got signed. And I knew I, Kimberly I lost Takara. my mind. Um, uh, but, you know, like, the, the things that Triple H is doing um, with the company is incredible. The only bad thing about it is it's bad for indie wrestling. But either way... It ke- I think it keeps indie wrestling from becoming stale. Really? Because I, I, I mean, I watched Chris Hero for like 12 years on the indie scene. I don't think I ever got tired of him. Like, he just, you know. But they finally re-signed him, thank God. Because they're not, like, a lot of people don't like it because of how out of shape he is. What is up with that? But Kevin Owens, mm-hmm. too. Kevin Owens has never been really, an in-shape yeah. guy. Hero right. used to be, though. Yeah, well, I mean, he always had a little bit of pudge on him. He was never always, he was never, like, super built or super I think it's also because it's a little more obvious. Like, maybe he should wear a looser. I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, it's, Cause I, obviously dude, I watched, oh, at Evolve, he only wore trunks, and I was like, ugh, gross. He's obviously not out of shape. He's just pudgy. Yeah. Because the dude can go. Well, yeah. Just like Kevin Owens. Yeah, well, like, the reason why WWE re- released him last time is because he wouldn't work out. Yeah. So... You know, there's supposedly there's, Vince McMahon doesn't like Kevin Owens because of his size. I know he doesn't. Yeah, but Luckily, look at Triple H is there. He's one of the best wrestlers, like on like all before the Superstar Shakeup. Raw was a shit show. It was yeah. bad, and Kevin Owens was the only re- Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho were the only reasons why it was good. Yeah, and like then they did the Superstar Shakeup, and they did the best thing. They they got Bray Wyatt on Raw now. They got, like, they, they went ahead and grabbed some guys. And Miz, even though I don't like him, he has been hot TV. He oh, has yeah. been hot TV. And they Must see TV, him. as he would say. Hey, boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not God. a Miz fan either, so. <laughs> At all. <laughs> well, yeah. No, but like I said, he has been hot TV. He, exactly, yes, yeah. He, he's, you know, and so that you bring those two over. Those all. And Apollo Crews, which is awesome. He, we just, he, was, getting, he was getting lost in, in, on SmackDown, which is weird because. Barely anyone does now the way that's booked, but like, um, but unfortunately, the only bad thing about Paul Cruz actually getting something is that he still has Titus O'Neil hanging around. Yeah, that's and, a weird uh, like, uh, dude. Like, Titus O'Neil, it might be one of the worst things to ever come out of NXT. He was supposed to be the next John Cena. Like, I like his character. I like the whole hoo hoo hoo. Like, I got. He could have been good. He just always seemed like he Darren was... Darren Young was better. Yes. No doubt. Always been better. And, the, and Darren Young can't catch a break. But I feel like it was just always Darren Young doing all the work and Titus just was there. Yeah. Like Batista. <laughs> yeah. He was the black Batista. I hate to get racist. I think you're giving, but... <laughs> I think you're giving O'Neal a little too much credit, but... Uh, well, well, I mean, I used to say Bobby Lashley was the black Batista, but then I figured out he's actually the black Brock Lesnar. <laughs> eh. Eh, eh, pretty much. <laughs> As in, like, he only has a handful of moves? Kinda. Yeah, okay. He, yeah, the Dominator, the Spear, and then he was just booked to just rule everyone's ass. Yeah. Oh my god, I just pulled out, like, a ready to rumble. I will rule you! <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll I rule actually, your ass! I was a Bobby Lashley fan, and I've actually got a. I'm, really... I'm, I'm a fan of his for MMA fighting. I never watched He's a him. great fighter. I've actually got a really cool ECW statue of Bobby Lashley. That's cool. That's right. Yeah. I was wondering where I saw it. I knew someone had it. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I, don't I, I hated that he, like, went to that weird Dominator thing in the middle of his career. Like, he went to, like, he would just weirdly spread his legs and do it. It was like, eh. <laughs> I hate that we wore his sweatbands now. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, it's, it's definitely weird, but he does sweat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that dude does sweat he makes a him metric look like a soccer ton. bomb. Uh. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> or or Kenny from <laughs> Spirit Squad. Yeah. With the headbands. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw the Spirit Squad went through your water. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah. Um but I guess they had to replace Kenny's the Hardy somehow. Kenny's good though, isn't oh, he? Oh Kenny's great. Yeah. Kenny Dykstra's great. He's the one that gave Randy Orton the RKO. Oh, you, okay. Like he he was using the RKO as a finisher in OVW. And it was called the Arcade Dome because his name is Ar- is Kenny Dome, and so he was, and then he gave it to Orton, and decided to stick with the leg drop, which I still say it's the best top lo- top rope leg drop in wrestling history, no doubt, like hands down. Jeff and Matt, I can't remember which one. I think it was Matt Jeff Matt does second rope. 
I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, Matt does second role. But, um, and then you have the rest of the Spirit Squad, uh, uh, not including Dolph Ziggler, were eh. It was Kenny, Dolph, and then the rest were eh. But, like... Who else was at the Ring of Honor show? I, I think it was Mickey, who was the guy who okay. helped Dolph in the title... Ma- or the ball horn. Yeah. You mean Mickey! <laughs> Oh no, no! I'm sorry. No, no, I think Mickey was Dolph. No, Nick. Nick. Oh, Mickey. it was it was Nick. Okay. Yeah, Nick Nemeth. Okay. And yeah. then Mickey Mondo is that what it is? Something like that. I, I can't. Oh, remember Mike what Mondo. Mike Mondo. Is the ball. Oh, that's right. He's the same per. Oh wow, I forgot about Mike Mondo. He was a big deal in ROH a while back. Mm-hmm. I don't oh, know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah, and then, like, but, yeah, so, I mean, the Spirit Squad's okay, it just depends on who, um, like, but, yeah, no, Kenny can, can Dykstra, because Randy Orton at the time was using the Overdrive, which is, like, the stock, it's, like, it's almost like the move you get when you just create a person and don't touch the moves, <laughs> like, like, and they're bending down, like, they, you're, they're gonna take a scissors kick, you take their arm, put your leg over, and then they just, you twist oh, them yeah. to the back bump. Oh, really? Like, yeah, oh. he was using that as forever. I like that move, right? I, I like it. I don't like it as a finisher. No, yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> I like I in the match that you watched, me, Ace Alexander, and Caleb Courageous. I did a scissors kick overdrive. So Caleb was bent down, and I literally did the scissors kick, and then in one motion caught the overdrive and gave it to him. Nice. Um, yeah, which uh, was actually one of my my ex partner that I talked about recent uh, earlier. Uh, he it was one of his signature moves, and he was in the crowd, so I figured I'd give him a nice little <laughs> shout out. Um, but yeah, no, like uh, you know, it's stuff like that. Like that's why I like indie wrestling. I think is because stuff gets a lot more creative. Um, Until it doesn't anymore. That's why. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, like I think recently Ace Alexander, who just pulled off his first shooting stardust on another person, which is awesome. Which for people who don't know, that's a shooting star turned into a 450 going the opposite way. So with the shooting star press, turn 180 inward and then do the 450. And nail it, and he just nailed it for the first time, and it was as clean as can be, because the dude is incredible. It's his new finisher now too, so um, he also hit six thirties like it's nothing. Um, oh my god! <laughs> like it, it, it's incredible. But so he, uh, in that match, he took a move. He did the shooting stardust, popped up, and it was triple threat. And then the next, the other guy came in, kicked him, went lift. He did a pedigree into a neck breaker. It was, it was. He literally. Did the pedigree to Ace, had him lifted up in the air, and then uh, spun them, and then did the neck breaker. It was awesome. I was like, that's the type of stuff you get on indie shows. Yeah. Is the create the the creativity, which I think that's why I fell in love with it. I think that's why I fell in love with wrestling in general. And like, you know, like the pedigree in its time was so innovative. It was yeah. like it was like, whoa, what is that? I'm glad Seth's not using it anymore though. I. Agree, except I don't like the new finisher. You don't like the knee strike? No. Again, another anticlimactic finisher. He does it. He does it springboard. You've well, seen it. He he does the springboard one where he does like the knee side swipe. Have you seen him do it? Yeah. Yeah. He, he also just does it jumping as well. Yeah. So I mean, it's kind of anticlimactic in that way. I, I I wish they didn't stop using the curb stomp. I know the legal reasons behind yeah. it. Um. And I know God's Last Gift just kept tearing people's fucking thighs. <laughs> he also but, had the uh, small package driver. Yeah, that's, that, that's, dangerous the, dangerous that's the God's Last Gift. That's the oh, God's Last Gift. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and that is... He, he it just kept tearing people's groins. Because when he lands in the pen, they just... They just kept tearing people's groins. It just oh. looks like it just kills you. I, 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 I took it on the, like, six chairs one time. Not from him, but from Ooh. someone else. That is Not like that, that bad. Not that, that bad. That and uh, I can't remember the actual name of it, but Drake's Landing... The one bit move oh, the vertebrae breaker. Yeah, it's a vertebrae breaker. That's Thank Ace you. Alexander's other finisher. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love taking vertebrae breakers. That's scary. I, it's, a, it's definitely a scary move. I think it's scarier when... Would you do it? Would you take it from someone you didn't know? Depending how long they take it. So if they're like, I want to try this. I want to try the vertebrae breaker for the first time. No. <laughs> My finisher's been oh, the vertebrae no. breaker for ten years. Yeah. Okay. You know? So I guess that differs. Um... Uh, there's a, there's a couple moves in wrestling that I probably wouldn't take at, in general. Um, one of them is the steamalizer. Um, that's what Kevin Steen used to take get someone lift up in the powerball, then grab their head downward, oh, yeah. and, and then send them into the second turnbuckle. Yeah. 
fuck you. <laughs> I'm not taking that. And if you try, I'm going to punch you in the dick. Like, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is I, essentially my attitude. Oh my God, I remember the first time I saw that movie, too. I think Sexy Eddie is the only one to ever take it as a back bump. Huh. Sexy Eddie said, screw it. I'll just, I'm going to take it in the turnbuckle. Just flip me all the way around. Fuck with it. <laughs> and, and you know who's using it now? Cody Ibushi. Huh. And he's using uh, it as a bridging move. He's doing it and bridging and pinning people with it. I'm like, what the? I'll take the bridging one because that's slow enough to where he can control sure. me. But like, I'll totally take the bridging one. But like, it's just that move in theory. Like, so many things can go wrong when you flip them this way. Their head, their legs cannot get out and their knees go backwards. Like, there's so many things that can go wrong. Um, and Kevin Steen's just good enough to where that never yeah. happened. Um, but like, I, as far as anything else, I've taken I've taken screwdrivers. I've taken burning hammers. I've taken Canadians from the top. I've taken reverse rondas from the top. I can't really think of anything else, but the Steamalizer is definitely one of those moves. Like, There's two other moves that stand out in my mind that look super dangerous, and that's the uh, Poison Dragon uh, Rally, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah, the Reverse, the, the, the reverse Rana. That's, yeah. that's what I call it. Yeah, I've taken it from the top. Poison is basically, it's like a straight down yeah, to the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've, ta- I've taken it from the top. And, and that fucking schoolboy Charlotte does. <laughs> she launches him into the bottom turnbuckle. Oh, <laughs> uh, that, that one's not so much. I know, but uh, it's just the first time. It's me very and him, creative. I first love time me and him saw it, we were like, "She just fucked that up." And then we saw the it. first like handful of times I saw it, I was like, "Man, she keeps fucking this <laughs> up." <laughs> like, does she not know to do a schoolboy <laughs> away from the turnbuckle? What the fuck? I mean, what's wrong? Yeah, what's like the problem? Th- th- those moves are th- those moves are fun. I've also taken a brain bust out again, not from Sami Zayn. But I've taken one, and I landed on the fucking... Not not the pad, I landed on the actual turnbuckle. And Ooh. it hurt, but I was Oh, uh, that's right, because, yeah. The Brain Buster from, on, on the top that, turnbuckle. Yeah. I've taken that, and it, that was okay. Brain um, Buster, just regular Brain Buster, seems like it's not that dangerous. Uh, it depends on who gives it to you. I um, think it's just the implication of what it is. It's like a yeah, suplex well, into I mean, the it, It's definitely an awkward bump, because you land on your upper shoulders, and you feel yeah. your legs kind of just... Yeah, kind of I wish Austin Aries would do it again. I, I, oh, there's, there's another move that I've taken that's considered a really dangerous move, and it's the double underhook storm cradle driver. Have you seen this? It's okay. So they get you like the person wheelbarrowing, wheel, wheelbarrowing that. So your legs are here. They double underhook your arms, and then they throw you out. You tuck, and then they sit out and keep your legs Ooh. trapped. I've taken it, and it was okay. Yeesh. I've taken it that version. I do a version of it to where I have them a dragon. So I pick them up in full Nelson. They wrap their legs around me. And then I tuck them, but not in between my legs. I tuck them to the side. So then I land like this. And it, it works for the most part. Like bi- I actually like doing it better than the bigger guys. Because I did it to Ace Alexander, who's a little guy. 150 pounds. And I gave it to him. And because he's so light and lanky, his knee hit him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, his own knee. And I was like... I don't I want, know what to do about that. I want you to do your bullshit explanation of your finisher and tell him what it is. Because it's a simple move and he just explains it terribly. Oh, the reverse okay. powerbomb? Yes! You know what a reverse powerbomb is? Okay, so pick him up and then you just slam him in your face? Like they no. lay down and slam him in your face? See? Uh. You do it wrong. <laughs> so, it's a wheelbarrow slam. That's all it was. I finally figured it out. I'm like, a wheelbarrow slam? Yeah, that makes sense. It, it, it makes sense. In, it, it makes it, uh, it sense. You used me for weeks. I've always, I've always loved the, um, I've always loved the power bomb and then swing their legs out to the face buster, like into the X Factor. Yes. I've always kind of loved that move, but again, I'm a small guy, so I have no factor. power. That's a cool move. It's a decent move. I mean, it's it's pretty much just grab their head and slam it down. <laughs> just like, fuck you. <laughs> like, it is pretty standard, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's effective. But in, in, yeah, but in theory, I mean, shit, so is the curb stomp. Not the, dri- not, yeah. the not the fucking, <laughs> not the uh, fucking uh, super dragon one either. Which I've taken plenty of times as well. Right. Um, but, like, the, the Seth Rollins one? I've never seen a problem with it. But, um, you know, I, I've always, I've always, uh, I've always wanted to be this, like, be a wrestler and stuff. And it, it's kind of nice that the dreams came true, essentially. And I, I like being a fan. I don't like when old older guys are like, you know, oh, well, you don't go to a show unless you're working it. You, you know, it's no, it's no reason to watch it. I've heard old really? guys bash WWE. I've heard old guys, ba- like guys that work indies and barely get paid. I've heard them say, you know, stuff like, 
oh well WWE is uh, is is uh, uh what what they say it's like destroying wrestling because there's too many big moves and I hate to break it to them that's what wrestling is now like it you can't get over by just punches and kicks and kicks anymore do you feel like wrestling is better than it ever has been WWE I, yes I do I think WWE I feel like wrestling as a whole is and wrestling as a whole I I think it's just because everyone's just it, there's a lot more pressure to get creative. And I yeah. feel like that that causes for just a wide a wider variety of talent. And yeah. and so far, I mean, like look at progress. The people that 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 produced the, like Tommy End and Tyler Bate and 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 Pete Dunne, like Progress Wrestling pr- produced a lot of those guys from Britain. Yeah, and they're so good. It's scary how good they are. So I feel like as our last topic, and I wanted Jeremy to be here, but he's not here. So ha, ha Jeremy. I, this is something I find very interesting and hopefully we'll bring up again on the podcast. A lot of people say the Attitude Era was the prime of wrestling. I strongly disagree. There's levels to it, though. Sure. Uh, the reason why I say that is because you think about it. When it comes to gaining popularity, that was it. Yeah. That was the yeah. it time. Because that's when shit started hitting off the wall. People that didn't fucking care about wrestling, sure. they are like, oh shit, Sable's showing her boobs and and, and like and like people are bleeding all over the place and like and, and Stone Cold Steve Austin's a total badass. But if like, they went back to those cheap pops, they'd probably get that popular again. And then the well, wrestling like, and everything would suffer. The only problem with that is is that they know that their market, at least a lot of like the action figure sales and all that stuff, is mostly the kids, which is why they went to PG. A lot of people have a problem with it. I see I see the business sense of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I see why they did it. I see yeah. because they're gonna make more money. End yeah. of story. That's why, what? We do family-friendly shows. We try not to curse. Because a lot of right. people don't want to bring their kids out and then hear a lot of F-bombs and, yeah, and, and stuff. And that severely kids, limits. And kids are the... the you're going to get more butts and seats from kids yeah. because because the kids will want to go. Then they'll beg their parents to go. Mm-hmm. And the parents have to go. And the so parents have for tickets. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it's... It, I, I see the business side of it. A lot of people want them to go back. But... I guess to me, I feel like the, the the bringing in of indie guys has helped sell our demographic. Yes. You know the the, the men that are like, you know, uh, let's just say thirty five to eighteen. Okay, that demographic is sold by all the indie talent that they right. love so much. Mm-hmm. At, and and then and then the kids are so, sold just because of the yeah. entertainment. The hero aspect PG. of it. Right, and and, and they keep it PG. So then the parents don't have an issue, they're allowed to watch it. So here's a question though, what do we gain from going to PG-13 or 17? Blood? Blood, more cursing, and probably taking females less seriously again. Do we need any prob- of that? And no, absolutely oh. not. Absolutely not. Because, I mean, look at women's wrestlers, I'm not counting Lita, Tristratus, that, right, that, yeah, right. that golden age right there. But you, I'm talking like... For example, um, uh, Sable. Sable's a good... Uh, Tori Wilson, Stacey Keebler. They were just yeah. eye candy. Mm-hmm. They weren't good wrestlers at all. They were just eye candy. And and that's... I like that re- that women's wrestling is taken seriously now. Yeah. yeah I've always, I've yeah. always wanted women's wrestling to, ta- to, be, the, to be taken seriously. After and it's watching, about damn time. After watching, uh, I think it's called The Last McGinnis, Nigel's story. Yes. I don't really need blood and wrestling anymore. No. I can understand why they don't want it. No. They'll be cool mm. with it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm fine. I'm I blood's gonna happen accidentally. Noses, yeah, oh yeah. mouths, no, going I'm, through a table, get punctured yeah. in the back like hardcore Holly. Yeah. Like you, you know, stuff like that's gonna happen, but um, it also makes it more important when it happens. Exactly. Yeah, like now the refs take their gloves out and they're ready to clean them yeah. up and, like I was just, I just watched rewatched NXT Dallas last yes. time today. Like when Joe was bleeding, they stopped the match a million times. A million times, yeah. And the that crowd was, was chanting, cool. "This is bullshit." I, I, you're right. I felt the same way. Yeah. A lot of the fans were like, "Boo!" And I'm like, "No, this is awesome." Man, yeah. fight. It, it, like, it, it was, adds like that title fight like yeah. ordeal because UFC, which is a real thing, they really punch each other in the face. Yeah. They really split each other open. When a cut happens, they stop the clock. They have the rest look. They have the, the ref stops it, and then has doctors look at them so they can continue. And yeah. I thought it added a realistic title fight uh, uh, level to it that that can't be replicated. 
You can't gimmick that. That's yeah. that's that is the a pinnacle of the crowd eating out of your hands. Booing or cheering. Oh but yeah. The booing or cheering, but that's literally that is the biggest case of something unplanned happening and it working out to the mm-hmm. best possible way. Was it unplanned? I, I think so. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> think they were planning yeah. a legit Just because they look out like, why is, why is he bleeding? <laughs> and Nakamura got busted open beginning of his match, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look what happened to Austin Aries' eye socket. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Woo! Boy, Shinsuke <laughs> got in a lot of trouble with that, too. But, like, I just feel like I lost someone out here. I don't give a shit. So, I have a worker, buddy, who's here from Citrus County named Derek Steele. He works Whoa. for what? He works for what? He hates popular indie wrestling. He hates Japanese wrestling because they work too stiff. He thinks he's stuck. He got trained at Dory Funks, and he's stuck in the old school mentality Jeez. because of it. And it, it's awful. I, I love the kid to death. He's my boy. <laughs> but, like, you have to realize where wrestling's going now as opposed to what you think wrestling should be. Where it was. Follow, follow the curve or get left behind. Or follow the buzzards. <laughs> follow the buzzards. Yeah, but no, I, I think that's a great last word. Is you um, know, do we really need that? No. Uh, actually, I have a screenshot of it of a guy saying, "Ah, oh, these damn snowflakes. Oh these, yeah, these kids nowadays suck." And I'm like, "You mean AJ Styles, Ricochet, and I just list it, dude." It was, was like all years. of Japanese wrestling. Uh, all no, of Japanese no, wrestling. No, no, because I don't know them. All I listed. Okay. Like uh, Shinsuke and a handful of other guys, I don't Omega. even know the re- Japanese wrestlers. Mm. I don't even know most of the European wrestlers. I know Zack Saber Jr. and guys like that, but Christ, I don't even know half the damn good wrestlers in the world. Yeah. And I listed a giant one. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's better than it has ever been. It's it's great, man, and I'm I'm more than happy to be a part of it. So, and part of that, I know I said that was gonna be the last topic. I'm gonna wind it into this. Brock Lesnar as an attraction. Because earlier, <laughs> I pointed out to you when we were watching that thing where Seth Rollins was like, I want the beast. Yeah. That promo was, that was great. Since we haven't brought up the weekly show at all. Let's go ahead and oh, get whoops. that in. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't even done our show yet. <laughs> That's right. Oh, well. That's all right. You guys uh, watched it. We don't need to talk about it all. Well, that. I got a couple of things. There's that, which I love that Lesnar is like on a, 100% different level than everyone on the roster. They talk about yeah. him like he's just he's untouchable. That's awesome. I agree. I just I just have issues with a champion that doesn't show up all the time. That's understandable, but it's also just like the blood when it happens it's more important. Yeah, but it's I mean, Andre the Giant. The, for I guess again, it's like when The Rock had the title. It's like all these guys bust their ass every fucking week. Sure. And this guy shows up once or twice, and he's the champ. That's hard. That's hard for especially a guy like me, who is an indie worker, and I bust my ass. If some big shot, you know, some fucking animal, which Brock Lesnar, I mean, borderline is an animal. Like if you come in and you're just like, oh, I'm the biggest guy here. So now I'm champion. That sucks. But there is something that you left out that everyone else leaves out as well. He did bust his ass for a long time. And when he did, he hurt a lot of people. And I was I didn't like him back then. He probably left OVW too soon. I, but he was just such a monster, and they needed something like that. Well, yeah. When you look when he came in, there He's wasn't an really any, there really wasn't any of that monster esque people. And I, and I understand that. And. Like, I guess for me, I just don't like when someone's like... I think wrestling... Like, I look at SmackDown as a product to be believed in. I feel like that's how wrestling's supposed to be. Because SmackDown, it's like... We don't have the untouchable monster. We don't have... We just have anyone that can win at any time and can lose at any time. Sure. And I feel like that's the most exciting thing about wrestling. When you have a guy like Brock Lesnar, who it's like... He's not gonna beat him. That's right. when it gets... Well, that's just it. It's Seth and Finn and all these guys, like... Actually, Miz came out and said it, like, Why do you want to fight Brock Lesnar? He's going to kill you! <laughs> yeah, like... It, I it, love it, that. It's the, way, it's the way he's booked, and for me, I guess... Like, you look at UFC. Like, like again, I'll bring up UFC again, just because it's the closest thing to, to, to wrestling sport. It's that, like, you know, even though this guy's won 12 fights in a row, Anderson Silva, right? Yeah. Dude can kick anybody's ass at any point. The dude is on another level. 
One punch. All it takes is one punch, and he can lose. And that's why his fights still get watched. Like a Ronda Rousey, she, she got watched yeah. so much, and she probably still will. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you know, Ronda is, but like, it, it's <laughs> so, like, but I, I, for me, I feel like, like I said, the most exciting part about wrestling is that anyone can win or lose, and when it's predictable, it gets less entertaining. And uh, definitely, that's and, when I stop watching. Yeah, and it, like, like Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. I know this is gonna end. I mean, like the kids watch because they're. The kids watch that because it's the two yeah. big animals. Like, oh, I want to see what happens. Because it's Brock the bad guy versus Goldberg the right. good guy. Right. Yeah. And, and we need that in wrestling. Right. But I, I feel like you can pull that off without the unbeatableness. That's why I don't like what Roman Reigns is going through right now. The only reason why I don't mind Braun Strowman is because Braun Strowman's supposed to be the the freaking the the sword, the stab, the back of these people. He's gonna be the person that makes the unbeatable beatable. Yeah. And that's why I like Braun Strowman so much because that uh, he's gonna be worked as he got he beat Roman Reigns and he's gonna be worked as he can beat Brock Lesnar and once that happens I will be so much a happier. Person. Yeah, Braun coming out and being like, Nah, on my time. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the hell? Exactly. It would be great. And, and and wrestling and at least start working Roman, Brock. Stop working them. Start working them down a bit. Start bringing them back to a human level. Yeah. Brock will probably especially be Roman. Especially Roman. Yeah, especially Roman. Roman could probably use a feud with somebody like The Miz or Finn Balor or someone to bring them down a bit, bring him down a little bit. Yeah, everyone thought that, like, The Undertaker was gonna, uh, like, even though he was gonna win, obviously, that, like, Taker was gonna be, like, the person that kind of humanizes him, but it didn't work. Well, he needs to be being... using this whole "this is my yard" thing now. Like, this is my yard now. That was an awesome promo. Yeah, he's a, he needs to be a heel. Yeah, they're never gonna turn him heel. You know, I I read a, I read an article because uh, Triple H said, "Why would I? I already created him as a heel. No one likes it. Yeah, he's already the biggest heel we have <laughs> because because of his face gimmick is not getting over. So now he's just a great heel." Yeah, that's essentially what happened to Stone Cold Steve Austin. He wasn't supposed to be a he wasn't supposed to be a face. He was supposed to be a heel. He's so but everyone was heel. just like, "Yo, this is awesome." Seeing Punk as well. Yeah. Punk too. So I mean, well, and Punk also was against Superman Cena too, though. And a lot of yeah, people were getting true. sick at, uh, sick of Superman Cena at that point. But like, you know, it's just again, I feel like essentially everyone needs to come down a little bit. Everyone needs to be humanized. I'm glad that SmackDown's doing that. I smacked down at any point. Cena wins title. Bray wins title. And then, like, Bray loses title. Like, it, boom, boom, boom. It's, like, a realistic, like, hey, one punch can end it to any yeah. of these guys. So, it, it, honestly, I feel like it's, it's, it's been great. And I will love for Lesnar and those guys to be humanized. Did Roman, did Roman show up on TV? I don't think he did. Well, he's going through, like, his cousin or whatever, or uncle dying and stuff rosy. Yeah, that's true. So I mean because he got killed by Braun. Well yeah. Well I mean he came back, um Yeah I was gonna say I think he was back on T V after the ambulance thing. Yeah. Well after payback. payback. After I know he didn't show up on um the wrong after payback. No, he didn't. I didn't think so. Um but like again like He should take a few weeks off. He's he's going to anyway because of the death of the family and stuff so and and the Samoan family's had a rough couple of years. Umaga, yeah, Alpha, like a lot of these guys. So, and, and uh, freaking uh, one of the Wild Samoans, uh, like a lot of these guys are starting to die off. And and Jimmy Snuka. So it's, and Jimmy, Jimmy Snuka is like a cousin to them too. Yeah. So like it's. You know, it, it's it, it's been a rough time for Roman personally, so I'm sure he's going to take a while off and then come back and just be as strong as ever. And then once he comes back, he should probably, I don't know, maybe feud with Braun again and lose a couple more times. Yeah, be and humanized then, a little bit. Or even lose to his old shoemates. Yeah. You know, lose, lose to Ambrose a couple times. Or if um, he takes that, That's a finish that we didn't get to, but maybe I'll come back next week. <laughs> maybe. Do what? What'd you say? I said Ambrose. I said Ambrose. Uh, that's another finisher that we didn't get to. But oh yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe we talk next week. I don't know. Who knows? Or if maybe you uh, back. I don't know. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> but maybe Roman takes long enough off, and he just comes back, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, Roman. What's he doing?" Yeah, and yeah. just does something completely different. 
I, I wish. Should do. If he'd stop, if he stopped using Superman Punch so much, if he would start using the Splash Mountain more, and like just come up with some more moves, and just come back as a completely different. I've never, I've never thought he was terrible. I've always thought yeah. he was decent. He was. He's a cool character. He's always been the least, the the worst part of the Shield. Always. Like you got Ambrose, who got stale. I will admit, Ambrose got stale. Yeah, I feel like Ambrose is the worst part. I I thought Ambrose was the was not the best part. Seth Rollins is always the best part until he got stale like not too long when him and Jericho were doing their thing. That was when he started getting stale um cuz his matches started getting really bad all the time and then Roman was just kind of like cuz remember back then Roman wasn't really using the mic much. It was mostly Moxley and, and just at the end that. And that was it. <laughs> That's it. And so uh I think uh I think he's came to his own a little bit. So yeah, basically, that's it. We need Roman to take some time off. We need him to come back, cut his hair maybe. Yeah. Changes up his ring gear. And uh, there you go, WWE. That's your free advice of the week from the future heels. Well, and now this happens, and now they're still listening. Yeah, absolutely. It's <laughs> like they're going to do the Charlotte Gauntlet match, and they did Shizaro, and... Yeah, they're yeah, listening. They they're know listening. We're... You know they're who they're listening to? The future heels. That's and right. where can you find us? You can find us on futurevillains.com. That's F E W T R U E V I L L A I N S dot com. You can it's find like Carmelo's entrance music. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. You, you can find me on Twitter at Best in the Realm. You can find me on YouTube, Best in the Realm. I'm on twitch.tv slash Best in the Realm. Uh, you can find me at Facebook, Best in the Realm Gaming. You can also find the Future Villains on Twitter at Future Villains and Facebook at Future Villains. Where can they find you, Brian? Uh, on Twitter at Brian25, Instagram Brian1138, and on YouTube Nerdy Brian, or on the Future Villains website. Damn straight. Where can they find you, Chris? <clears throat> uh, now I'm not a big social media guy, but I will tell you, you can find me at uh, the What Wrestling Facebook. You can find me in the What Wrestling uh, YouTube channel, and you can also come out to What Wrestling, especially this next weekend, May 13th. Hopefully. You guys will come out. We have Chris Hoven from the Buccaneers coming. He's an ex-pro bowler, and he's, you know, from around here. And autographs and talk to people. And I'm just hoping that I see you all there. Again, it's going to be at the Crystal River Armory. Crystal River Armory, which is... Uh, the corner of Venable and 19. There you that go. Boy. Right, right across, across from Applebee's and Chili's. Right. Yep, absolutely. And so then you can get a, grab a nice bite to eat afterwards. Yeah. So... May right. 13th, how much are tickets? Uh, 10 to $15. 15 for front row, 10 never worlds. All right, well, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, let's stop. <laughs>